Welcome at Blender 2.8 for beginners, in this tutorial and the upcoming ones I will show you how to make this scene with some handy tips and tricks. Make sure you got Blender 2.8 from Blender.org or check out the description for a direct download link, it's free and no profile needed. When you start Blender up for the first time, you will see this intro screen that looks different at my side because I already got some saves on here, but for now you can click at the side to get it away. And just in case you miss what mouse and keyboard buttons I'm using, you can see them back down below at this left corner. For example, if I would click onto this camera, it will show you what button I've used for it. Now the first thing that I'm going to show you, two different ways of deleting things. Because one, we don't need this camera for now, so you can just select the camera and press on delete, which is the simple one. Or you can click onto the lamp and press on X and then click on delete. So it takes two steps. The next thing I'm going to show you is a few simple movements into this viewport. That is, if you use your mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out. If you hold your mouse wheel, you can turn around. And if you hold shift and your mouse wheel, you can move to the left, right, up and down. Now of course we also have some tighter views, which I mean if you press on numpad 1, you can see the front view of this cube, if you press numpad 3, you can see the side view of this cube, and if you press numpad 7, you can see the top view of this cube. Now of course there are more views, but these ones are for advanced users. And now you know a small basic of moving in Blender and going to different views. Now let's start modeling a part of the television, but the first thing you might can see is that the cube is into the grid of the ground. Let's go to the front view with NumPad 1, let's select our cube, and let's press G so we can move it up. But as you can see, we can move it up way too freely, and we want to have a little bit more control, which we can press Z to lock it for up and down. But still, we can move it very smooth, and if we hold control with it, we can move it onto the grid, which gives us a little more power to do so. Now let's place it onto the grid. Now you can not only lock it onto the Z axis, but you can also lock it onto the X axis. Press G, press X, and move it left and right. Now, how do you know which one you need to press? Well, up here, you can see the blue line, the red line, and the green line is called Z, Y, X. Now, if I would go into 3D mode, you can see it a lot better. Now, once again, press G, press Z for up and down, press X for left and right, and press Y for forwards and backwards, and press Escape to do nothing. And now you know the basics of moving an object. The next thing we have to do is scale the object. So let's go to the front view with numpad 1. And first I just want to show you that when you press S for scale, that when you move your mouse to the left or right to make it bigger or smaller, it will always focus onto the middle orb. Now this can be a problem because if your television is too big and you want to make it smaller and you apply it right now, that means that if the red line is our ground, that we need to press G and press C to move it down and try to aim it onto the ground again. There is a way more handier thing to actually do this. I'm just going to press Ctrl Z to undo the actions. The first thing I'm going to do is place this cube back with G, Z and holding Ctrl onto the red line with the middle up. And now I'm going to go into edit mode with tab. Then I'm going to press G because everything is by default already selected. Press Z, hold control and move this up. If I would go out of edit mode with tab, you can now see that the middle orb is down here. So if I would press S for scaling because my television is too big, you can now see it stays onto the ground, which is way more handier to work with. Let's give this television some shape. So go into edit mode with tab, press S for scaling, press X so it will only go left and right, and hold Ctrl so we work onto the grid, and make the television wide like this. 
Now, if we would go to the top view with numpad 7, you can see that our television needs to be shaped more pointy down here. But in order to do that, we need to add in another line. Press Alt-A to unselect everything. Now press Ctrl R. With Ctrl R, we can add in more lines, or better to say, a loop cut. Now you see, when I move to one of these outer lines, you can see the yellow line. In this case, let's go to this line at the right side and click once. And now we have added in an extra line. Now you can place this line something about this and just click to let go. And now when you press Alt A to unselect everything, we can select those dots down here and make it into a more pointy shape. But there is one problem. When I click in an empty field and drag and drag selection box over it to select those dots, you can see when I hold my mouse wheel and turn around that we didn't select the ones underneath. How do we do that? Well, let's go back to the top view, press Alt A to unselect everything. And now let's click on show X-ray. When we show X-ray and I move my mouse, you can see we can see through the objects. This will also count for selecting things. So from the top view with numpad 7, I make a new drag selection box, select those dots. And now when I move with my middle mouse around the object, you can see all the dots are selected. Now when I press S for scale and press X to lock it for left and right, hold control, you can see we can make it into a point shape. I'm just going to go to the top view to check if that is okay, and it's okay. You can do it from the top view. We're almost done with giving it a basic shape. Let's go to the side view with numpad 3. Let's press Alt A to unselect everything. Select those top ones. Press G, press Z, hold Ctrl and move it about something like this. Now if I turn X-Ray off so you can see better what we've done here and I press my middle mouse button, you can see now we have made a basic shape for our television. But as you can see, our television has a little bit too much of a sharp edges. You can especially see it when I go out of edit mode with tap. Like these edges are way too sharp, and if you look around you, everything in your life doesn't have a too much sharp edge. There are two ways to solve this, and allow me to show you how. I got two basic cubes down here. When I select this cube down here, go to this tab modifiers with this tool, click on add modifiers and click on befell because that is what it's called for these unsharp edges. You can now see we have unsharp edges or at least less sharp. Now this is not only good for the look but also especially for the reflection and the light. Now if I want to have a little more control on what I want to befell, I'm going to click on this cube down here to show you what I can do. I'm going into edit mode, I press Alt A to unselect everything, and now I'm just gonna select three dots. Now if I select this first dot, I want to select the second dot, the first one go away. In order to not let that happen is to hold shift. When you hold shift, you can select multiply dots. So now I've got three dots selected, I want to have a well, in this one, I can just press Ctrl B, and now if I move my mouse away, you can see I'm adding a less sharper edges only at the place where I want to. Now, of course, there are ways to have more control about this befell modifier, but that is something for another tutorial. In our case, we're going to add manually a befell, and I will show you in part 2 why. So we're doing it without modifiers. Now we only want to add a befell on the outside line. So the only line that doesn't get any befell is this line down here, which counts all the way around. Now if I would select the television, go into edit mode with tap, and everything is selected. If not, press A to select everything. And I would press Ctrl B like I did before, and I would go out with my mouse or outside. You can see it will also add a befell on the edge where I don't want any. I'm gonna press Escape to undo, I'm gonna press Alt A to unselect everything. Now there is one way to solve this problem, and that is add some loop cuts which we will remove later on. So we're gonna go to the front view with numpad 1. 
press Ctrl R like we did before and choose up or down. Click twice so you will make one and then immediately place it. Go to the side, Ctrl R, you have one, click it to let it go. Now if I would hold my mouse wheel and go all the way around, you can see we now have a loop cut everywhere that meets the middle. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to select everything by pressing A. And we're going to unselect everything we don't need by holding shift and just click every dot that meets on a plus. So that is this one, the one on the top, the one on this side, the one on the back, the one on this side, and one more at the bottom. So now we only have the edges on the outline selected. And now I can go ahead and press Ctrl B, move my mouse a little bit to the right, click, and there we go. We have a lesser sharp edge, or better to say a buffel only on the outside. And now I'm going to show you how you can remove those extra loop cuts we made earlier. First I'm going to press Alt A to unselect everything. Now you can actually select lines. If you hold Alt and click on one line, you can see we now have selected this one line all the way around. Now, do we press delete? Well, you could, but then you get a whole list, which you will also get if you would press X. Now, in this case, we are going to click on vertices, because vertices are these dots. Now, these dots holding edges, which are these lines. So, let's click on vertices. And now you can see a lot happened down here, but don't worry. We're going to simply solve this problem. Now what we are going to do here is actually quite simple. I'm going to learn you how to fill gaps. Now in order to make one face, which the faces are these flat plates you see. A flat plate is always between four dots and four edges. Now what we are going to do here is we're going to hold shift. We're going to select this dot, this dot. Move with holding middle mouse button a little bit, hold shift, select this dot and that dot. So now we have selected four dots. If we would press F, we just fill in a face. Now don't worry, you don't have to do select four vertices each time. I'm just going to press Alt A to undo. And all I'm going to do right now is just select these dots and these dots. Press F, and now it will fill in by itself. Press F, press F, press F, press F, and this is something super handy. It will fill in itself, and problem solved. Now, let's do that on the other side too, which I mean the top. Hold Alt, select the outline, press X, delete the vertices, select this dot, that dot, this dot, and that dot. Press F to fill in the blank, select this dot and that dot, and now let's rapid fire, press F. And now, problem solved. That wasn't too bad for this one. So, now we have bevel edges at the places we want, we don't have extra loop cuts, and now we have made our basic shape for the television. Now allow me to show you one more thing. We are actually going to make the place where, you know, the television is showing this stuff. What we're going to do now, we're going to go to the front view, we're going to zoom in for a bit, move up. I'm going to click here, make a drag selection box to select those four dots on the front only because we don't have X-ray on, we don't select anything behind it. But that's very good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to press E. Pressing E actually makes something just like a loop cut, something extra. Now I'm just going to press escape to let it go. And I'm going to press S for scale so you can see better what it did. It just added like a loop cut in the middle instead of going all the way around. Now I'm just going to go to the front view and I'm just going to adjust this. 
gonna press S for scale and give it something like this so I'm looking at the bottom and the top that is okay I just need to get the sides done I'm gonna press S and X just gonna make it kind of square but not all the way through something like this would do I'm gonna press G gonna press X and I'm not gonna hold any control I'm just going to eyeball this out Something like that, that the top and the side and the bottom are kind of the same. Because over here we're going to make the speakers, we're going to make some buttons. So now we have made this, right? Well, it doesn't really look like something, you know, where you can place a glass or you see a game on it. We need to do something again. Well, press E. And I'll move it to the back. And I'll place it to the back. Something like this. Just click, and now we have a place where we could place a glass and, you know, give the television a little more shape. We have sharp edges again. Let's make some bevel. So I'm gonna press Alt A to unselect. Alt Shift, and only going to select these outer touches, or what you could also do is hold Alt, select one line. Very good. Now I'm gonna press Ctrl B, move my mouse outwards to make another edge. Like so, come out at a mode with tap, and now you see our television is start to get shaped. Now, one other thing you want to do when you have done some things in Blender is, of course, save it up. Go ahead and go to File and Save or Save As and save up your work. Now, the next time we are going to make the speakers, we're gonna add some buttons, we're gonna add a name to the television, we're gonna add some colors, and we're gonna add some background reflection. Now, if you've got some questions or a request, then use the comment section down below. If you found this video handy, then like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.